me, God, all these things. But they, there is a part for you to play. There is a way you're able to activate these blessings and walk with them. There is a way that you're supposed to uh, invoke. For example, we all talk about the name of Jesus Christ in a lot of things we do. We talk about the name of Jesus Christ. But you realize that even though we are using the name, we are not getting the same results like anybody else. Why? It is because our understanding is different. And so we do not walk in the same level of, uh, of revelation. We don't walk in the same level of victory, even though we are all using the name of Jesus Christ. So this is the, the reason why uh, we, we also get different level of victories, because our understanding is different. Our level of obedience is different. Our way of confession is different. You know, the way we approach the word of God is different. The way uh, we live is different. So as much as uniformly we have been blessed, we have been lifted we have authority we have power but our levels of victory are very different so when i talk about authority it's important for you to understand from that level that as much as you're given authority, you can still walk afflicted. You can still walk oppressed. Why? Because of lack of understanding or lack of something. That is something you are missing. The problem is not with God. And that is why most of us believers, we keep on feeling like God has let us down, like God is not coming through for us. But you know what? Everything was done for you. So what you need to ask yourself, are you missing a principle? Are you missing maybe a post? of your heart is something missing there are, are you missing maybe a level of something maybe a level of prayer maybe your consistency is a problem you see so because what i want you to know about authority authority you get you you you, you walk with power anytime you believe in god you're, you're a prayerful person you can actually walk in power any day and most of the time the way i've seen power whether it's by, uh, you know, the power we see, you know, maybe people falling or if you're prophetic, uh, the way you're going to know that is power, you're going to realize that your eyes are opening more or your ears are opening more. So power basically is different depending with your, with your call and how God has wired you. God will reveal to himself to you in power in different ways. But one of the things you're going to realize that power is working in your life if you pray for a long time. If you pray, for example, uh, for three hours and beyond, you will realize that there is a dimension of, of power that will work and something will happen. You, spiritually, there will be a shift. There will be a shift. Many people will tell you that the minute I went to a prayer center for 21 days, for seven days, for 40 days, is when like power was released and I got a specific miracle. You realize that. That's why people keep on going for prayer because there is knowledge that when I do this, I'll, I get this breakthrough. So power works when we pray long, but then authority is when we keep at it, consistency, until you walk in the authority of it. I think I spoke about the last time when I spoke about working in the authority uh, of finances or working in the authority of money economically. So here we see um, that Jesus Christ is saying, I have given you authority and I've given you power and you're going to be able to uh, overpower all the devils and you're going to be able to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, from here, I want you to see what happened to Philip because Philip seems to have gotten this very well. And he went to Samaria. You can read that in the book of Acts 8. From verses number 4 to 11 is a long story. That is a book of um, Acts 8, 4 to 11. It's a long story. I'm not sure whether I want to read all this, but we can have a look at it because it's going to help most of us. And you know what? Philip got a territory. That's why I'm talking about Philip, because he got a territory, not just a person. He just didn't go after a person. He went after a city. Well, the Bible says, therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Verse 6, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing uh, the miracles which he did. For an unclean spirit crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with passes that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simeon. Now, please listen to this because this is something that I want you to notice. There was a 
to the certain man, <coughs> sorry, called Simeon, who before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, right? Giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, like the whole city gave heed to Simeon. From the least to the greatest, saying, This man is, a great, is of great power uh, of God, and to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with his sorceries. Now, you see, one of the things I want you to notice here, we have two people here. We have Simeon, the sorcerer in Samaria, who before Philip happened, he was in charge of Samaria, because everybody gave heed to him. Everybody listened to him. They knew from great to small that Philip was a great man, and they kind of believed that he was a great man from God because he bewitched them. This is to show us that somebody can actually, one man can actually take a city. One man can actually take a whole territory. All right? But then when Philip came, remember what is happening here in Acts chapter number 8, there was persecution in the church. So everybody was scattered abroad, and Philip now came to Samaria. By the way, one of the things that God does when he wants to grow the church, sometimes he will cause the people who are like in the ministry to release those who are mature to go. You have seen that in the Bible, where uh, the Holy Ghost will tell them, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, because of the work of the ministry. That is one way. The other way, God uses uh, increment or multiplication of the church is by persecution. Especially when people are not in agreement or not ready to release other people. If you have a kind of leadership that is not really uh, really ready to release anybody into ministry, and people are just growing old in the ministry, people who can minister, people who can bring souls into the kingdom, but the leadership is not willing to release them to maybe go do what they need to do that doesn't mean break off you can go minister like you see my husband and i we are still and our spiritual father but we have the freedom to do what god has called us to do so one of the ways that god will use to make sure people go to their destiny or go into their purpose is by persecution that's why sometimes you can see um a breakup somewhere, not necessarily that it is God's will, but it, it will get to the point where God will allow some breakups if there is, there is a, a kind of, um, I'll call it witchcraft, because when people are not releasing the ministry to do what they need to do in the right way, uh, because they are mature, I'm not talking about premature breakups, no. I'm talking about people who are mature, who should be serving God with a lot of freedom and a lot of support and a lot of love, but they're just some demonic witchcraft leadership that is not willing to let them go unless they just serve them. In that kind of way, there shall be breakups, not because the devil initiated it. There are breakups that are brought by the enemy. When you see those kind of breakups, there is rebellion, there is a lot of things going on there, there is hatred, there is jealousy, but there are breaks up, breakups that the Lord will allow. Why? Because the gospel has to continue. There should be... <coughs> Possibly there shall be internal issues or there will be external um, um, persecution like in the, this case. So in this case, there was external persecution. So the church could not stay together anymore. They could not meet together anymore. So they broke off. And as they were going away to different places, they went preaching. And so Philip ended up in Samaria. This is a place where somebody already owned the city. There was a priest already, a priest of darkness in Samaria. And when Philip got here, the Bible says that he preached the gospel. And people had the gospel, believed in Philip's gospel, and they got born again. Not only got born again, there was joy in the city. Not only joy in the city, them that were sick, they were healed. There was deliverances. So what, what this witch had done... Simeon, he had bewitched people. So number one thing you see, there was bondage here. So Philip came with salvation and with deliverance. And so there was salvation, there was deliverance. People were sick, people had palsies. But when Philip came, preached the gospel, we see here, there was change. People got healed. Those who were lame, they were healed. Those who were possessed, they got free. Demons were coming out of them. So we see Philip came here, did a great work, and there was great joy in the city. Why? Because when Christ comes in a city, people are healed, the lame are walking, those who are bound are free, there will be joy. So, one of the things I said last time, you will know which kingdom is of a city by the patterns you see there, 
or by the administration you see there. I remember using the word administration a lot because by administration you understand who is in charge. And so in this city, you will know who was in charge was Satan because you would have seen people who are bound, you would have seen people who are sick, people who are lame, people who are possessed by darkness. Why? Because uh, Simeon was in charge. So administration in Samaria that was working at that time was that one of Simeon. But then Philip comes and he's able to take the city. And what happens? There is joy. Now, you see, these are two kingdoms taking over a territory in different times, and you can see clearly what happened here. So why am I bringing this up when I'm talking about authority? Because there is some things you will not be able to do just unless you're working in authority. There is some results you will not be able to get and sustain them just unless you're working in authority. When you pray for a long time, like I have said, you will see power. Your eyes can open. You can get a very clear prophetic word or you can get healing happening. But then if you realize a week later you do not have the same results or you had a vision or a powerful dream or somehow you just saw God in a very powerful way. You went to a prayer center and then you saw a breakthrough. But then after that, you kind of going back to the factory settings. You know what you're happening, you, is happening to you? You're operating in power. Because when, when power has, uh, has really gone deep into the roots, it becomes authority. Authority is where now you have, uh, you have, uh, you have kind of a, a level and you're able to be over that kingdom. For example, if you're working in healing and you're not just working in power to heal, you're working in an authority of healing, what will happen is you may not have to do a lot of things, you see. You may not have to pray for a long time. You can actually just walk in an environment and healing takes place. You can actually just walk in an area without anybody knowing you're there and healing will take place. That is authority. You kind of carry that, you, you carry that presence to heal. You carry that unction for healing. But power, there is work involved, you know. You have to kind of keep yourself charged up in the spirit, in prayer, in fasting, you know. But then authority comes when you have been consistent and consistent and working in power in the meantime. Consistent, consistent, until now, if, it is, if your authority is in finances, you don't struggle. People just look at, uh, for you and they give you money. Contracts just look for you. Jobs just look for you. So that is the difference. I hope I'm making sense and you're able to understand. Let me see a few comments here. If I'm able to clearly differentiate to you the difference between power and authority. Thank you. You're saying, oh, yes. Okay. Okay. I see people are beginning to understand. Okay, very clear. God bless you. Thank you for letting me, me know that it is clear. Okay, clear, all right. So now, so when you're talking about priesthood in territories, power alone is good. Power alone is good, but authority is better. Why? Because power will come into a territory. Okay, let me say this. Have you seen when there is possibly um, uh, some, some kind of a revival going on in a specific territory or in a specific church or maybe in your life? And then you see things are happening in the church, you know, people are getting healed, the things that are happening, things are going on. But then it is happening in the church, but outside there is really no breakthrough. That is a whole difference. Power can work in the church. Power can even work in a crusade ground. And people are healed at that time when you had the crusade. Power can work when you had a house fellowship. But authority basically talks and overtakes and rules and dominates in a territory. That's why authority is very, very important because power, I don't want to say power is limited, but power is action. Power is like kinetic energy. It is action-based. So you see so many things that are going to happen. But authority is basically changing the whole configuration of a region, a whole configuration spiritually of a city. Okay, so that is why Philip was able to get to Samaria and there was rejoicing, there was joy. Why? People got healed. And, and what happened here is that you even, even, you see, even this witch himself was like, Allah, something is very different here. I think I need this one too. 
So even him, the witch, Simeon, he was able to reckon, as much as I know this can happen, as much as I've been in charge here, I have to agree that something has come in town that is not the same as what I have been able to do before. So even him, he realized this is higher. So this is what I want you to understand. As a priest, you need to pursue authority, which has already been given to you, but you need to pursue to walk in it experientially. Then you are going to realize we now, as a body of Christ, is going to be very easy for us to take territories. It is sudden, a suddening when you see there is so many churches in one area, but then it's like the, the amount of darkness in that area has not gone down a bit. Like we can have 50 churches in a city, but the amount of darkness in that city, it is so high. Now, that is to tell you the churches will have power. It is not that the churches are not powerful, no, because people are still getting born again. God is still busy there. But if we're going to change a city, if we're going to change a city, if we're going to change a nation, if we're going to change continents, it has to be people of authority. Now, this explains to you why revivals break when people have been praying and consistently praying. Because uh, now what happens is that authority now begins to work whereby it is not just about a specific church or a specific time. Even people on the roads are going to be feeling, no, something is going on here. People who love to drink, they are like, you know what, I'm done. I, they may not even be born again. Have you heard stories of revivals? where the whole city, you know, stopped singing that even um, the, the police uh, stations were closed, jails were emptied. Why? Because that is the operation of authority. The authority of Christ, the government of Christ, the government of the Holy Ghost, the administration of God now takes over the city. Now, the only way that can happen is where, when priests who understand priesthood rise in prayer and are consistent. This is not for people who just want to see something happen when they go to preach. There are people who just want to see something happening in their families. This is not just for people who just want to uh, pray for a few months and they see something happening. This is not for people who just want to build a ministry. This is for people who are after territories. You cannot operate territorial priesthood if in your heart you are not after territories. If what you are after is to build a ministry, all you want to see is people coming to your church, or attending your meetings, or just having a crowd. If that is what you're after, you will possibly see power because, of course, God will allow you to minister to his people. But the only way you're able to do territorial priesthood is when what is in God concerning a place begins to now be your heartbeat because now you are beginning to carry a territory as a priest. You have begun to be impregnated by God with the nations, with the regions, with cities. That way, you can actually walk in a very serious level of authority. Does that mean you have to be a very powerful preacher or a great man? I tell you what, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. Do you know you can have, here we see Philip went and preached the gospel. This was an evangelist. He went and preached the gospel. So we know about Philip. But if you want to know that the kingdom of darkness have mastered priesthood in terms of demonic priesthood and what in authorities in territories, you will know it by the fact that you do not even know who is in charge. Here we are told about Simeon. We are told about Simeon. But there are cities you look at and regions you look at and you're wondering, so who, what, who is in charge? What altar is in charge? You can see uh, the uh, demonic things that are happening. So you do know there is a demonic administration there. But you cannot put your finger on the priests. Because remember, if the altars of darkness operating in a region, I told you about altars last time. If there is an altar, there is a priest. All right? So you can see uh, the results of wickedness. But you cannot put your finger on a priest. You can see, I told you last time, the reason why politicians who are well-dressed, well-educated, well-informed, they will take a flight, go to South Africa because they want to win an election maybe in Malawi. They will go to South Africa to win an election in Malawi. Why? I said because the witch in South Africa actually owns Malawi. You remember that example? I told you like now, Kenya, we are going into, into our general elections. 
and of course there is a lot of uh, politicking going on, but you find politicians traveling to Tanzania, to South Africa, to different nations for witchcraft. Why are they going to a different nation, to a witch in a different nation? Because territorially, that witch is the priest of darkness in that nation. And so they have authority actually to give that politician the, 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 the ability to win the election in that nation. Do you know the witch? No. Have you seen them on any billboard? Not at all. Did you even ever know who they are? No, you don't know. Am I making sense to you? Okay, so that is basically what happened when we are talking about authority. It is possible for somebody to walk in authority and never know who they are and never even come across them, but that is the person who owns <laughs> that region. That is the person who owns that nation. All right? I remember giving that example. So when you're talking about authority, even though here we are seeing that Philip went and took over this city, I believe God gave us this example so that we understand there are two phases of uh, territorial priesthood. You can have territorial priesthood happening, and you're able to know things the way we are knowing about Philip and Simeon, but the same thing is possible to happen, and you will never know who or what is behind the scene. You will just see the, 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 the signs of darkness or you're going to see the signs of light in an area but who is involved you don't know who is a priest you do not know and you know the enemy is so good in hiding so he will actually establish his evil priesthood in an area and not even want a lot of attention so that he can keep on hiding and doing what he needs to do so satan is very good when it comes to things 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 like this when it comes to territories he is he, he, he has demonic wisdom on how to hide his priest. They keep on operating. We believe us, we cannot put our hands on it. But then how do we overcome them? We overcome them now, of course, by prayer. I've taught a lot on this one. There are so many things I've taught on this. You cannot get this if you don't go and begin understanding priesthood. There is only one, uh, several ways you can be able to overcome this kind of thing. Number one is authority. If you're going to take now such kind of territories, and that is our mandate in this end time, that is our mandate. We need to begin to know how to take territories as individuals, as churches, as a body of Christ. If one man can take a territory, then you can take a territory. So how do you do that? Start working in authority. How do you work in authority? I've explained it. Number one, go into prayer. Don't pray today and tomorrow you're not praying. You can never get authority without consistency. I said that. You can never get authority without consistency. And one of the things the enemy will make sure that a believer cannot really sustain is consistency in prayer, especially night prayer. Consistency in fasting, especially serious fasting. That's why everybody who prays and fasts, they struggle. They, they, they struggle. You will find if you told yourself you're gonna pray and fast for 21 days and you're just gonna drink water or you're just gonna, you know, maybe just have drinks or just gonna feed in the evening, something very genuine looking will come, or you can even sometimes fall sick and you're in medication, so you have to eat. You you start telling yourself. I got sick, even God understands, I'm just going to take the medication, then I'm going to continue with my fasting. And you realize when you do that, most of the time, you will never continue. That's why I told you, I think I taught you, and I told you, I don't just begin fasting. No, I, I, it's, I, I put it before the Lord to help you. Because you, if you do not realize that you're dealing with the kingdom of darkness, you're going to live a life of repenting. If the Spirit of God does not help you to pray, if it doesn't pray through you, if it doesn't help you to fast. If you think you're just going to put before God, you're going to fast this whole year as we are fasting. We eat one meal a day or skip one meal a day. If you think that is done automatically, you're just going to live a life of uh, repenting every time. Why? Because you need the backup of the Spirit to do some of these things. You see, you may not have understood why I keep on pushing us to pray and fast. You know why I do that? Because the minute the body of Christ masters consistency in prayer, in fasting, we get now authority and we're able to take territories. 
That is the reason why. We cannot be watchers and we pray like everybody else. We cannot even take our own families if we're going to pray like everybody else. Kingdom business is serious business. That's why if you hear me say we are fasting the whole year, and we are skipping a meal a day or eating, a, I mean, uh, eating just one meal a day, depending with what you do, because I don't want anybody to strain. And we also keep on doing Esther's fast every month. And you're wondering, why do we have to do this? Because I tell you, if you keep on doing life, doing Christianity, doing prayer, doing fasting, the very same way you've done it, if you never master these things, you can never walk in any form of authority, not in your finances, not in territories, not in your career, not in marriage, not in family. You're going to live as a normal believer. So priesthood causes us to go deeper. Things that normal believers do, in priesthood, we go deeper. In priesthood, we are the ones that make the path. We make the path. We are the ones that discover things in priesthood. Because it is when you are persistent, then the spirit of God now is going to get attention. Do you know? You do not get spirit attention until you are persistent. Until you are persistent. When I mean spirit uh, attention, I don't just mean one thing. I mean like now you can tell what I'm getting right now is serious. It's not just a dream. It's not just a vision. This is not just a healing. I, like when you start seeing like now you're getting consistent visits from angelic beings. You're being taught things by angelic beings. You're getting unusual understanding of some of these things. If you're one of those who hear things, your ears are just open and usually, you know, like I remember today I was praying and I was, it's like I was just open to uh, like a, a channel of information was given to me. I was able to know very deep things. I even got names uh, of, of people uh, that I still need to know where I will meet them or what, you know. So before you get there, I'm not just talking about the shallow things that we see. No, I'm not talking about the heat in your hands. Those are, those are things that happen now when God wants to start using you uh, with power. Maybe heat in your hands or pins that are pricking you in your hands or heat on your feet or cold. All those sensations, those are things that have to do with power. But authority, you can be as sober as you are. But the truth is, you have the government of an area or a thing. Because I said last time, you can actually even have the government economically. Because the seven mountains also, they are territories. Territories are not just nations and regions. Territories are also spiritual. So you can also have, you know, uh, the government in the area of uh, maybe media, education or families that God will just give you, you know, a say in that area and you're able to take that area. All right. So I hope it is very clear up to that time. And what I want you to see in the, in the story of Philip, he came to this city and he took it. But please see what the enemy does here. That Satan is busy training his evil priest for territories. But our training is one thing. Because our training, because we are, we are carnal. So our training mostly is how to get your breakthrough, how to become successful, how to work in financial freedom. Those are the topics you find in our Christian circles. In the meantime, Satan is causing his priest to master territories. So you are learning ways of success, but Satan has placed somebody who has taken the authority in an area, maybe like finances. You, when you're trying to know how to succeed, and there are five points with no help of the spirit, I tell you, you're going to struggle. You will struggle. So our training is very shallow. That is why these watchers have platform for me is very important. Very, very important. Because the things we learn here will make you understand that you as a believer, when you receive what you receive on a Sunday morning or in a Bible study, that is a work you need to work with the Spirit. If you're going to get anywhere, if you're going to leave a mark in this world, I tell you, that what you receive on a Sunday, that what you receive corporately, which is very good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's very good. Remember, we meet in churches, we are believers of different levels. So there are things that cannot necessarily be taught on a church platform. 
because one person is there, God born yesterday, another God born again like 20 years ago. So we are in different levels. <clears throat> but if you're going to go anywhere and be able to be entrusted with the government of heaven in a territory, you have to seek God for yourself. You have to walk with the spirit because Satan is training his people. Now, the other thing that I want to, because I want to finish earlier today, the other thing that I want to talk about in terms of uh, territorial priesthood is that you have to start exercising your kingship role. We have been talking about um, priesthood, but we all know what Revelation 5.10 says. Revelation 5.10 says, And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So our place of reigning, our place where we exercise our, ki our, our priesthood or kingship is on the earth. So that to us is basically to say, if you are a king and you are a priest, and it means you have to walk in the, in the, in the not, just, not just the authority of a priest, but the authority of a king. A king walks in commands because the word of a king becomes a law. So a king walks in command. Now, uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to mean when I, see com I say command, it is not the kind of declarations we keep on declaring. No. A king has a throne. A throne speaks of authority. And it means in that territory, the king is recognized as the one whose word stands. So when that king says something, that territory listens. Why? Because he's been placed on a throne. His word is final. Okay? So sometimes you realize we keep on having declarations. I decree I'm blessed, I'm not poor. And we have all those declarations which are very beautiful and they are good. But three months later, you are still there, still working in the same challenge, but still declaring something that doesn't seem to agree with what your life look like. It is because you do not have authority, a command. Authority also comes as a command. A king has a command. His word is a command. His word is law. Okay? So when you understand who you are as a king and then a priest, you'll be able to understand walking in command. How do you do that? Number one, you need to know who you are. These things have already been done for you. It is not how loud you shout. I know sometimes people will have to pray loud or declare loud. That's fine. But actually, power is not in, that, in there. Authority is not in there. Not in the loud shouting. No. No, it's not. This, you see, a king even writing down, he may not even have to speak, even writing down. That's when, that's the reason why once a king endorses a law, it is law. He may not even have to come and tell the people, I've said this and this. No, he would just put his signage there and it's done. So you need to know when, when you are a king who understands command, you are going to walk in a level whereby even the enemy knows you carry the king of kings in you. And so whatever you say, of course, based on the word of God, it is so. Your word is inspired. And when I say your word, I mean what you speak, all right? Maybe of a territory, of a situation, is inspired of the spirit. That is why Luke uh, 15, 21 says, and I've, I've given you a mouth and wisdom that even your adversaries would not be able to gain stay. So you need to investigate your mouth. What your mouth says, does it cause your environment to agree with it? Do you know there are people, when they say something, even a simple, I bless you, you walk blessed. There are other people, even looking at you with eyes of jealousy or eyes that are witchy, if you know what I mean, you automatically engage into a battle. What does that tell you? That person has a command, an evil authority, a demonic kind of, uh, of ability that they can actually interfere with your world. But there is somebody else who is empowered of the spirit that if they say you are blessed or it is well, 
It is really well. It is really well. Okay, you see, when you hear these teachings, don't hear them from very far. Hear them, it is you I'm talking to. And this person who needs to walk in this authority, it is you. That you get to that place, you can tell somebody, I bless you, and they are really blessed. You get to that place that even your thought, just your thought, is a command because you're a king. Your thought is just not in the mind. Your thoughts cause things to shift in the atmosphere, things to shift in your finances. Now, that is now kingship. You may not have a throne or be a president anywhere, but in this kingdom, you are heading this government. You are a king. Your thought alone is a mind that was in Christ. So even what you think, heaven will look at it and it will be established. Why? Because it is God thinking. You're not thinking defeated thought. You're not thinking thoughts of feeling sorry for yourself. You're thinking powerful thought. You're a king. A king thinks great. A king thinks they have conquered territory. A king thinks they have the best weapons. They can conquer any nation. They can take any territory. A king thinks of how they are going to extract the minerals in their region or something like that. A king owns the, the, the resources of a territory. That is why most of African nations, even today, you find the picture of the president in the nation that is actually on the money. That is even why Caesar's face was in the money. Why? Because it is to tell you a king has authority and he actually is in charge of the economy of the territory. So one of the ways that you're able to really do priesthood very well in a territory is now entering into your priestly office. Because when you enter into your priestly office, plus now your kingship office, you are now established in your mind, your mouth, your heart posture. And then from all that, you're going to be able to see that you're taking over territories. Why do we have believers who walk around feeling like they are disadvantaged while Jesus died for them too? Because they have not mastered kingship. Kingship helps you not just to know who you are. It helps you to walk like it, to think like it, to speak like it, to act like it. That is kingship. And so when priesthood comes, which is now the spiritual side of it, then you mix it with kingship. It is very easy for you to take a territory. For example, economically, if you're thinking you are blessed, if you're confessing how blessed you are, even when at that specific time your account doesn't have much, I can tell you the truth. You are going to see things are going to change. Now, when priesthood comes in in such a mindset, and now the Holy Ghost is going to now, you know, prompt you and tell you what to do. Now that you're thinking like that, what do you do spiritually to walk in those blessings? Then your spirit man agrees with your kingship mentality. Then you get results. So how to walk in command as a king is very important if you're going to take territories as a priest. A priest can, can, can be somewhere he then and never be known. But when you're talking about a king, a king is not somebody who you can just hide around. No. A king is somebody who is known. So you may not be known in your region, but in the spirit, they will know. They will know you are not just nobody. They will know you know who you are. There are demons that cannot try to intimidate you. Why? Because they know this one, they know they carry Christ. They know the one in them is greater than them that is, uh, than him that is in the world. So the kingdom, kingdom, of, uh, kingdom of darkness will even take advantage because you do not know how to walk, how to talk, how to think as a king. And if you fail there, no matter how much you pray, now you're trying to exercise priesthood by prayer, you can never succeed. This is one of the reasons why people keep on saying over and over, intercessors are poor. They are poor because they like a specific kind of mindset. They lack a specific kind of understanding. All right? So they will, they will exercise priesthood. They will have dreams. They will have visions. They will have clear things. That is priesthood. But kingship is on zero. Because a king knows positionally who they are. 
So if the Bible says you're blessed, a king understands that positionally. If the Bible says you're healed, a king understands that positionally. All right? Uh, one of the reasons why I don't like seeing people crying when they go into prayer, but unless it's maybe, you know, a prayer of petition or, you know, intercessory. But anytime I go into prayer with people and all they do is cry, I get very disturbed. Because it means they don't know they, they, they are, they are, their place as kings. When you are a king, you approach God and you approach matters. You speak what a king wants to see. Okay? And uh, I want to talk about Romans 12, 3 because this is going to help you. Romans uh, 12, 3. And it says, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And this is very important here because we see, according to Romans 12, 3, that every man has been given a measure of faith. So, one of the reasons why when you're doing kingship, you're able to have that mentality, speak that way. It is because the only way a believer can operate well as a king is because the foundation of kingship is faith. So you're not just trying to, to kind of just, uh, you know, uh, psych yourself up or, you know, just spice things and say, I am blessed, I can never be poor. No, it is actually the foundation of all that kind of mindset, kind of talking, kind, kind of, uh, you know, posture. It is because your foundation of is faith. And so we all have been given a measure of faith so we can all walk in kingship. Are you understanding me? So the reason actually why we do not walk in breakthroughs or we are not able to do priesthood in territories is not because we lack faith. No. What we lack, like I have said, is here. Our understanding. Our understandings are very different. That is a scripture I keep on quoting most of the time. That is Ephesians 4.18. Having the understanding that can... Actually, my husband loved this scripture. Sometimes we will see something... And all we say to each other, having their mind darkened, <laughs> being alienated from the truth. So Ephesians 14 says, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of blindness of their heart. Do you know if there is a scripture that is powerful? Is this one? Because Ephesians 14 is where the enemy has really taken over believers. If only Satan can keep your understanding darkened, if he can only alienate you or separate you from the life of God or from the truth of God, if he can only do that, he's done. I said some other time here, Satan does not work hard, he works smart. So he will make sure that your understanding is darkened. That's why you can go to church for 10 years. And by the way, you're receiving good word, but your life ain't changing nothing. Why? Here is bondage. Understanding is darkened. If there is something you need to pray for as a priest is your understanding. That's why you can see somebody can receive a word. Because the understanding is open, they will receive that word, run with it, and things will begin happening. People will begin asking you, how can you have such a speed? Somebody else receiving the same word from the same person, and there is really no change. What is the problem? Understanding. Okay? So, faith has never been an issue. Faith can only be seen because somebody has an understanding, I am blessed. I am a king. If you struggle with those things, if you struggle with those things that sounds good concerning you, if it feels to you or it occurs to you like you are disadvantaged, your problem is not faith, it's here. And so it becomes very hard for you to do priesthood because a king, first of all, will have to believe in themselves before they go to contest if you're coming out of a democracy. But we all know that kings are not elected. So we are not elected into no kind of power. No, we are priests. We are priests and we are kings established by God. So we don't even need to have a lot of work here. But naturally, kings or presidents who need to go through election, they have to really believe that people will like me, people will vote for me, people believe in me before they bring priesthood. 
Before they go to their witches or if they believe in God, they go to God. Here they have to believe in themselves. That is why you hear motivational speakers talking about believe in yourself. Us, we don't have to believe in ourselves. Our configuration is Christ. We carry Christ. That's our configuration. But then if the world affected you so much and affected your mind, then you have to not work on your mind. All right? So that your understanding is not darkened. So most of us walk in ignorance and we are not able to take territories. Because I want to finish very early today, I want to talk about something that is very important to worry. My people, please don't miss this. And please don't leave now. This is very important. I want to read, most of you saw me share this scripture on social media. And I believe I shared on the platform of watchers. Isaiah 48, 17. Pakaman is saying we're here. Isaiah 48, 17 says, That says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to prosper, which leadeth thee by the way that you should go. When you read it, it's a normal scripture. But when you look at it with the eyes of the Spirit, this is very deep. And this, if you don't get this as a priest, you can't take territories. It is says then, Isaiah here, he's telling us that, that God, the Holy One of Israel, he teaches you to prosper and he leads you. Now, this is very simple in our days because we all know the Holy Ghost is our teacher. What does this mean? It means there are lessons that you can only be taught by a spirit. And I tell you what. 90% of the lessons of priesthood can only be taught by the Holy Ghost, by a spirit. Sometimes, let me use the word spirit, because it can be the Holy Spirit, sometimes it will be angelic beings, some, it, will, it will just be God unleashing what you need at that specific time. 90%, I say again, of the lessons on priesthood and territorial priesthood in particular, you only learn because you've been taught by a spirit. And that is why we are not getting these lessons, most of us, from a pulpit. Why? Because this is a walk. You as an individual, you will need to walk. If you hear it from somebody, thank God. But once you hear it, get your own path and get to be taught by, your, by a spirit yourself. Why is it if you know, do you know, if we put up a poster now, and I say next Wednesday is going to be prophecy and something, you are going to notice that our numbers are going to go very high. Why? Because as long as people can hear what God is saying, they like it. But it's like we don't ask ourselves, why do I have to be told? Why can't I be the one who is sourcing that information myself? Because again, Satan has alienated us from that truth. That even though I can tell you that says the Lord, you yourself can walk in that truth. You can walk in that truth. So you need to get to the place where you desire to be taught of spirit. The book of Ezekiel, I don't know, I want to see your hands on your comments. How many of you have been able to complete reading the book of Ezekiel? In one minute, can I see hand up? Like you have read Ezekiel. And you, you didn't just read, you read. You, you, <laughs> you can tell us what you read, you read. Can I see? Quickly, quickly, let me see your hands. You've been able to complete reading the book of Ezekiel. Hey, where are your hands? Not yet. Okay, I'm not yet to read. Okay. You know, one of the things I love about this platform, people are just so genuine. Okay, so basically what I'm seeing here, is, is what I thought, and that is not yet. That is what I want to explain to you. If you read the book of Ezekiel, I've not even started, not yet. I love your genuineness, and I love your honesty. Okay, thank you so much for your feedback. But what I want you to know, one of the books that will show you a man who was taught of a spirit is Ezekiel. Ezekiel, you know, if, please, if after this, if you can just deal with the book of Ezekiel, what it will do to you, it sounds very complicated. Why is it complicated? Because you are a flesh person. When you're a spiritual person, you actually relate with a lot of things that Ezekiel came across. 
But when you read it without understanding the things of the spirit, you are like this. I cannot even finish one chapter. What are these? Then I saw. Then I had. Then the Lord told me to lie on my left side for 390 days. Then the Lord, you know, Ezekiel is just strange. Then I was taken, you know, uh, into a river, and the water went up to the uh, ankles, and the water uh, went up to the knee. And you're wondering, what are those? Then I was taken to the valley of dry bones. You know, let me tell you something. What is happening here is a man... Ezekiel was actually, most of us know Ezekiel as a prophet, but actually Ezekiel was a priest. We will see a good example of a man who was taught by the Spirit. I say the Spirit because here now we are dealing with the Holy Ghost, so we cannot just say Spirit. This is the Spirit. But you will see different forms of how he was taught. Some places will be like, then I was taken, then I saw the angel of the Lord. So these are different dimensions on how Ezekiel was taught. Ezekiel's calling had to do with Judah, had to do with Israel. So his calling had more to do with territory. So his priesthood was very broad. And so you will notice a lot of complexities in the, in the, in the book of Ezekiel. Even if it takes you a month. To read one chapter a day and um, maybe just a few verses in the chapter, do it until you start to let your mind take that information and have a desire to have that kind of a work. How many of you remember? I told you sometime that there is a time I will get sent an angel to teach me all. You know, the very first time that thing happened, I was shocked. I was like, what is this? Because number one, this angel came dressed as an angel of war, but he was dressed like a ninja. And I'm like, wait a minute, is this a demon or what? How can I be having uh, experiences that I think that they should be like that? Then all of a sudden, I'm getting an angel dressed like a ninja. And he specifically takes me to teach me to fight for nations. Now, when you begin getting experiences like that, then you realize that Ezekiel was actually at a level where he was teachable of the spirit. Do you know, if you allow the spirit to teach you, you get to a place where you cannot even tell people what you're being taught. Not to make you understand, because unfortunately, the kingdom of darkness has done this so well that we understand it more than we understand the kingdom. Let me tell you something. Um... Have you ever asked yourself, in the kingdom of darkness, somebody will go to a witch or a sorcerer. They are going to be told, um, this is a bone of a fish or whatever kind of a bone. Take this bone, go hang it at your door, and these results are going to happen. Or go take sugar, put sugar here and there, and do this, or take this charm, and maybe that charm is even some normal thing that we all have in our homes. Go dig a hole in your farm, cover it. This and this is gonna be the result. And those things happen. What? These witches, they are taught of the evil spirit. And so they know the evil formulas to do A, B, C, D. I know now it's beginning to make uh, you know, sense. So in the demonic world, they have agreed, they have submitted to be taught of evil spirit. So they will not tell you, take a bone of a fish when you're supposed to use sugar or salt. They know what works where. That's why they even advertise. If you have problems with your marriage, problem, come, they cure. And they're not joking. They have the result for those things. Why? They have been taught of the evil spirit. Until they know what formula works where. The same leaves you see in the forest and you don't even care. A sorcerer, a witch, will go collect a few, mix, do whatever thing. I tell you, those leaves will work against you. Why? Because there is spirit intelligence behind it. Is it now making sense? I want to see your call. It's not making sense because the evil kingdom have known we cannot operate in this realm without the help of a spirit. 
And so they have submitted to be taught by spirits. So they know now it is not just leaves. The normal Cyprus leaves that are normal to you or the normal eucalyptus leaves that are normal to you. Those leaves, they will use it in a specific way and they are going to be with a whole family. The same fish bone you eat and throw away, they have been taught in a way they are going to use that fish bone and they are going to impoverish you. All right? The same money you go to the supermarket with and shop with it, they can take that money and count on it and you're going, you're going to find trouble finding money. The same hair, you comb every day and there is hairs in your comb, you throw it in the dustbin, they can take that hair and use it against you. The same monthly period that we women have every month, we throw away those pads and nothing goes into our mind. But in the demonic kingdom, there is a lesson that that blood can work against somebody. Look at that. Why is it that the demonic kingdom have submitted to be taught of the spirits of darkness, but here in this kingdom, we are just like, hey, I'm blessed, uh, scattered by fire, God is with me. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We are jokers. That is not the real uh, meaning of being uh, alienated from the truth. You will find that in Christianity, if you just go tell somebody, oh, I saw an angel and the Lord appeared to me, already you look funny. Because we, we take it as it is actually out of the, the, the way for somebody to talk about those things. And that is why I love this platform. Because for the first time in my life, I am able to exp uh, express myself. There are things I can never say on a church altar. Because everybody will look like, like you at like, uh, what did she just say? An angel came to wake her up. What did she just say? Because it's not normal. It's not common. It is judged. But people of the kingdom of darkness, they are being taught of spirits. And we, all we are doing is trying to undo what they are doing against us. They go, they, you see, what makes a witch know that they can use this and they can work against you? A spirit of darkness came to them and told them what to do. Why would they ask for a goat or ask for a chicken? Because they know that is a formula to do what they need done. A spirit reveals that to them. So territorial priesthood, I, I want you to read Ezekiel because you're going to see a lot of explanation. Some of them will not make sense, but it will help your mind now begin to agree. The kingdom we are in, we have not even scratched the surface of how much the spirit of God can teach you, whether through angels, whether through experiences, we will have not even scratched the surface of this thing. Because if we do, since we are operating in the days of the spirit, I tell you, we're going to take territories, you know, we are going to get formulas on what to do anytime. And you're going to see unusual things happening in our lives. And how do you do that? By walking with the spirit and he walks with you until you have a track of hearing the spirit. You know when you're dealing with the spirit, you don't, you know, sometimes... As believers, because we are very quick to get results, you can think it is a spirit of God, but then you bump into a demon, and the demon begins to give you instructions. That's how cults begin. Haven't you seen people who begin cults because they have, they need to start doing this, they need to start doing that. They had a spirit. They had a spirit, and they begin doing something. So when I'm talking about being taught of the spirit of God, you have to walk number one in the word. In the truth of the word, you have to walk by faith. You have to grow and allow yourself to walk with God until you know this is now God I'm dealing with. Sometimes it will begin just as a dream. And, the, and that is where most of us actually fail. That's where we fail. When the spirit of God wants to begin teaching you, he mostly will begin with a dream or a revelation or a vision or a trance. Or just an encounter. Then he will fold his hands and wait to see your response. Most of us, our response is that even the following morning, you don't even pray about it. What you do, you call your pastor 
And as pastor, I have this dream, what is the meaning? Because your pastor loves you, he's just going to interpret and help you to figure it out. Others, you call your friends. The Spirit of God is just folding his hands, looking at how you're going to deal with that revelation you have. Some of you, because you've never really seen an angel before, you, you're going to go now, even on Sunday, you're going to have a testimony, I saw an angel. We don't just see angels, that is the reason we see them. So did you even know why that angel came? So we even abort what God wanted to do by just being big mouth. So the Spirit of God will, will just flash something and wait on your reaction. And most of us fail the exams there. Fail the exam there. I'll tell you something I saw, I saw today when I was um, praying. And this is actually going to, um, to make you see <laughs> how heaven weighs us. I'm praying, I'm deep in prayer. Then I see myself sitting by the weighing bridge. You know the weighing bridge? I mean, any nation has roads that have weigh bridge, right? I saw myself today sitting at the weigh bridge, kind of waiting, the way trucks wait to be weighed, <laughs> I'm there. Then I knew where you are, Joyce, heaven is weighing you. If you make any single mistake, you miss to go forward. Elaboko. Heaven is weighing my weight. For what is just to release, can you carry it? Are you qualified? That was now me today. That is now me today. So when you walk with God, there are some things that, like now maybe that one sounds weird to you. But now, why I mention Ezekiel? Because you're going to find in Ezekiel, he's so like, then I saw a measuring line. So God can even relate you with normal things. Why would he show me I am actually by the way bridge? Because I'm on the scales of heaven. All right? I'm on the scales of heaven. Now that things are happening, now that, that there is some glimpses of one or two areas, now that, you know, we are beginning to do one or two meetings and God is being seen, heaven is weighing joys. So when you walk in the spirit, some of these things are going to be so real to you. So when I see that, what do I do? Now that I know I'm on the weighing scale, my prayer, hey, I cry to God like thunder, that whatever will disqualify me, it will never find me. Whether it is within me or without, I pray to God, it will never come close to me. Whether it is pride, whether it is whatever it is, external or internal, I deal with it in a place of prayer. Not only prayer, when I pray, if God shows me that there's something I need to do to be qualified, then I do it. Are you getting me? So heaven will flash something. Some of you is a dream. If I ask some of you concerning dreams that you dreamt about regions, about families, about yourself, you've done nothing. Is it that you just didn't do anything? No. Satan, he will alienate you from the truth. He knows if you take that dream serious, you're going to get a breakthrough. So you will not be consistent in your prayer. And it happens. It is, happens a lot. So um, it is important for you to ask the Holy Ghost now from today to be your teacher. Unfortunately, we all know the Holy Ghost is a teacher. But if I ask you to show me the lessons that the Holy Ghost have taught you, very few can tell me of a lesson the Holy Ghost has been able to teach them. And even if most of us have lessons, you'll notice there are lessons that are life lessons. Those are good. We all have life lessons. Even people of the world will tell you they have life lessons. They learn this and this through life. This I'm talking about is spiritual intelligence. Only a spirit can reveal these things to you. So, for example, even your own personal things, the issue of marriage, there is an intelligence you're missing in the issue of marriage. How should you get married? Who should marry you? You're missing a spiritual intelligence. Why are you struggling financially? You're missing some spiritual intelligence that the Holy Ghost can reveal to you. Remember what I told you? I tell you a lot of stories here. I told you some time ago how me and my sister prayed for our family because we had people dying in our family. And the Holy Ghost revealed to us in our family there was death. There were people that were killed in our family. And so this, the demon of killing people in our family was legal. Why? Because we had killed. 
in the family years ago in terms of uh, like two generations ago. And here we are in a generation, uh, this generation we are like we are blessed and people, we are still burying people. And so we decided to pray and the Holy Ghost brought us intelligence. If you do not dwell here, where? Where you get intelligence from the Holy Spirit, I tell you, you will never walk in priesthood. Because the Holy Ghost only works with people in priesthood that he has trained. He knows if he tells you like Ezekiel, you are going to make a cake of this and this, and that is going to be your food for 390 days, another 40 days, then he knows you follow. All right? So please, that's why I told you, listen to this and never forget. The lessons of it, it can take time, but stay there. Stay there until you realize that now there is a change. It is normal for you now to traverse in the things of the spirit. It is normal for you to traverse with angels. It is normal for you to get understanding in the word of God. It is normal for you to get saints of old tell you things or teach you things. Do you know the things I go through? I tell Lord, oh God, send me Paul because this one, only Paul can explain to me. I tell you, sometimes I'm like, Lord, if I'm going to walk in this intelligence, the only person who I know according to the word who walks in this is only so and so. Send me this person. And you know what? Sometimes you send them in my dream. In my dream. And you keep on wondering why some of you keep on dreaming with servants of God. Somebody kept on telling me that every time the God speaks to them, they see my face. Several people have told me that. So sometimes God will even use saints of old or people that you believe in in this generation. It's the Holy Ghost in them. The Holy Ghost in them. God is just trying to use them to teach you something. So please let's master this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak a blessing upon everybody who logged in today. And I pray that even as we exercise priesthood, that we are going to walk in the intelligence of the spirit, that we are going to be able to take our territories and to take nations for Christ. I pray for grace to wait in God's presence. Grace of prayer, grace of fasting, grace of giving, big heart to love people. Holy Ghost, guide us in a, in a personal path. I pray for the grace to walk in a personal path where the spirit is the teacher in Jesus' name. I want to release you to give. You're welcome to give. Remember, we had pledges of those who are pledging for the upcoming crusade. The budget is very big in millions because we are putting up a tent. It's a rainy season, so we need to have a tent. Uh, so the details to give are on the screen. In the meantime, uh, you can give even as I let my husband to come on the screen and be able to update you on the upcoming crusade and what we request or require from you. So the giving details are on the screen or on the, um, I see Pakamani has put them on the, on the comment. Uh, you can send your giving there for the crusade. And uh, even if you want to give for the word tonight, we always give, always come with an offering here. Because there is power when you give an offering and believe in a specific word. You are going to receive grace from that specific day. So if you want to give for today, that's fine. You want to give for the upcoming crusade, that's fine. Uh, let me just welcome my husband, even as we give, to continue and update us on that. 